Hi everyone, welcome back to Cold Waters. Following on the success of last time, I mean surviving that is, we're here with the USS Tinosa, uh, west of Iceland, 25th of May 1968, 1100 hours. Captain, we have new sonar contact bearing 225, designate Sierra 1. XO reports, our depth is 174 feet, heading is 108, our speed 5 knots. Local conditions, scattered, strong breeze, weak surface duct, strong thermal layer 105 feet. Good. Your orders, sir. Let's close into 20,000 feet. We'll have a quick look. We've got Mark 16 and 37s, so let's get some 37s loaded and 20 uh, noisemakers, and we are good to go 100% all round. Great. Let's all man hands to battle stations. Okay, here we are in our permit class submarine. 174 feet. Let's have a quick look at we are below it's a weak duct and a strong layer. Okay, so it's very, very thin, isn't it? 105 feet. Wow. Um, we're here because we are looking to take down some shipping. Yes, we've uh, we've proven our worth against subs last time, and now we need to uh, start to see if we can take on some surface vessels and survive. That's the uh, the name of the game. So I'm going to start to come towards 225, which is the heading we got that contact on. Let's just, can I zoom out any further? I don't see anything. So that's fine. Bring in the heading round now, of course. 117, it probably been quicker going the other way, but that's okay. We're going to stay quiet. Um, I may drop down a little bit more, maybe down to 300 feet or so. I'm not expecting any submerged targets, so uh, there are some. The mission is there are some ships being sent to resupply, so we're looking for some merchant ships, that kind of thing. But it will will have a, uh, a military escort, which is uh, obviously going to be the biggest challenge here. Okay, we've got some sonar being heard. That's not us pinging, that is somebody pinging us. We are currently going course 230, depth 342. Still cruising along at 5 knots. Let's go silent. Rig for silent running. Let's see what's what. There's no surface or no seabed here uh, within our 1000 meter test depth. So. Uh, Okay, we're going to continue on for a little while and uh, see if we can pick up this target. Hi guys, welcome back. Nothing as yet, so we are heading, well we're actually coming to 185 um, to see if we can't, the contact was behind over here, so we're going to take a gamble that it's either going to go up or, oh there we go. So we've got these active sonar pings, which is basically what I'm heading towards, hoping we can find something. Now, I'm coming above the layer. In an effort to see if we can uh, get these on the old passive sonar. There we go. There we go. We finally got it coming just above the layer. There is S. There is Sierra One. Great. Let's have a look at the signature. What is she? Uh, she's not got a humpback whale. I would say she's a Kazbek. Cool. So that is what we've we've found. Now I believe there's supposed to be more ships than just her. So she's probably the escort. Um, so the ships are probably going to be behind her. At a rough guess. Oh no! I beg your pardon, a Kazbek. Look, that is a merchant ship. Interesting. Right, let's um, change our. She's going this way, so let's change our heading to sort of come down to 
160, 165 uh, and see if we can't give ourselves a little bit more time uh, maybe plot a better solution if we come this way obviously we'll get be able to do the old passive radar uh, pass off sonar against the uh, the Kazbek for a little bit longer and hopefully pick up another target or two now we are here to sink this ship um, but I th reading from the briefing it did say that there was most likely going to be uh, some escorts so hopefully given a little bit longer we can start to uh, pick up a better targeting solution there we go already it's uh, up to 39% in one big swoop um, oh there she is ah and look behind her she has a large ship with her great stuff okay so this is the the baby we're after and this is one hiding behind here she's showing in here but she's not showing on radar which is a bit odd so this looks like an oil tanker or something doesn't it and that looks it's got a helipad on the back sort of guns that is that is a hunter killer for sure Nice, right. So we are at currently 100, 100 feet or so. There they are, they've just popped in. Lovely. Okay. So if we were to select this, um, yeah, we'll do a normal search pattern. We'll go passive, we won't go active sonar. And what's that? That is 25, 28. You know, that's a long way. We need to close in a bit more. Um, so, what I'm going to do, I'm going to dive. And we're going to dive. If we go deeper, we go faster without cavitating, and uh, we should be. Contact faded. We've just gone below the layer and it's faded. Damn. Okay. Well, we can predict. We can predict its course down there. So if we come to something like one five five heading, we should be able to run parallel and be okay. We'll keep increasing the speed as we go down. So if we start plotting the course about one eighty to come straight down. Whoa! Hang on a minute. That changes things. When did that just do that huge leap? There she is. Uh, she is a full-on warship. Oh, wait a minute. There's another one over there. Ah, she doesn't have a helicopter. I was mistaken. It's a huge battleship. Look at these guns. Wowza. Okay. I'm wondering what that is. Is that another tenure like this one here? If that is, that would be awesome. Uh, but interestingly, this is on that side of that ship. Oh, what the... There we go, this is the other contact we, we can see in that bit, but we couldn't actually see beforehand, so that must have just popped in as we changed cameras, otherwise we wouldn't have been able to see it. That starts to make more sense now. I was wondering why we could see it on there, not on the radar, because that wouldn't make sense, but it was there, it just must have popped in literally as we changed the camera. Kotlin destroyer that it's difficult to tell with that one that's not right I 
is a Kotlin. That's what we're going to go for. So that's two military. So I'm not sure this is right, you know, this Kazbek is right. Um, let's have a look at this one. No, that does. But that doesn't tie in with cheat cam. So we've got the two destroyers here, or the two military ships here. And we've got this cargo ship there. Why is that showing there? Okay, so these two have got decent solutions, 77%, 63%. Um, I'm going to swap these for Mark 37s, are they? Mark 37s, yeah. This is not tying in with, with this, which is a little bit worrying. Ah, okay, now they're pinging all over the place. Maybe it's because we're on the layer slightly and it's slightly going a bit cockeyed. Right, so this is doing 14 knots. That's doing 30 knots. It's speeding up potentially. This is doing 20 knots. Hmm. Would these torpedoes actually catch them up in time? Oh, the Coatlin has just gone off radar. Right, so the Kazbek, which is our target, is 95% solution. Um, I am going to plot you. I'm going to plot one there. Uh, yeah, there. Fire. And I'm going to plot one about there. Fire. Once they get to the end of the wires, they should then start to search. Switch that to a search pattern. We're firing from 100 feet. Uh, we are going to start to drop down and then we're going to power it again to see if we can uh, close in on them. Okay, those two torpedoes are away. So we'll descend. We don't want to go too fast, otherwise, we'll cut the cables and we'll lose any chance we have to control them a little bit further. I'm not sure if there's a depth capability to the. Uh, 72%. Ah, control part. They've gone. Okay, fine. Um, there is a depth control to it. There you go. That's answered that question. Uh, with that done, we can get those reloaded. And we can we can dive. We might as well get down as quickly as we can. Then we can try and get ahead of them slightly. Because of where we fired them, which was about here, if they can get there quick enough and do their search patterns, although I don't think that we're actually going to get them, they're going to, these ships are going far too fast, aren't they? 20 knots, 13 knots, and that was doing a lot more than that, wasn't it? Yeah. Never mind. 
Right, let's get some more speed going. Lost control of the Kazbek. Okay, they're fading out, that's fine. Hi guys, those torpedoes have just yeah, no, they missed. They're um, they're still going, but they're just they didn't um, they didn't pick up, and they are still wandering off mercilessly. However, as you saw from that first shot, we have been able to um, power down here at 800 feet, and we've caught them up. There they are, right there, and they have gone nice and bright on our solutions board here, and we're just currently building up the solution with them which is absolutely lovely uh, so we got we picked up the Kazbek it's course 171 uh, doing only only doing 14 knots only 6,000 yards away and we're currently building up the solution as 66 and this uh, Severdlov 165 course heading uh, only doing 11 knots, as it, I think that's doing a turn to follow the Kazbek. Um, solution plot is 70%. So, we're going to set that to go up. Uh, we might actually surface a little bit, as not surface, but we might climb a little bit as well. Give the torpedo a chance to, you know, to have to climb 800 uh, feet is... Um, quite a, a task so you can see the third love is speeding up to 20 knots already there she goes so if we were to put one down the pipes of this one what we probably want to do I wonder if we fire early uh, so we want to go up and if we fire about 1200 yards and then we want it to after 1200 yards then start to climb and try and pick up this one right I, on that count we can um, stop surf uh, not surfacing stop um, Climbing in the water and just uh, we'll hold fire here at just 600 feet. Okay, here we go. Oh, there we go. She's uh, picked up. She's climbing. Is she still searching? What she's acquired. Keep climbing. Now, hopefully, this is coming in her baffles so she won't see this. She's at 20 knots. Where's the other ship? There's somewhere there. I can't. Oh, there it is. Still doing 20 knots, so she's not doing. Although she is starting to turn, so maybe she's having a look back. Still got control of this torpedo for another 18 minutes, so we're doing okay. So the other ship is far in the distance, but I'm sure she'll close on us should anything go amiss here. Now she's coming up to the surface quite nicely. 
Now we just need to, to pick up this ship. We could stick the active on. But we have seen in the past that the passive seems to sometimes be a little bit better at acquiring the target. Don't know why. Having watched a few videos and a few live streams, they do recommend sometimes just leave the passive to go. It seems slightly more... reliable than the active sonar but it hasn't picked it up yet so we might have to switch it on any second but we said say just under 17 minutes of control on this torpedo now so um, we're doing okay there she is we're going past the other ship there yeah, there's this there's our primary target actually these military ships are just our secondary targets the uh, Right, she's gone up to 26 knots now, so she knows something's up. Okay, we might have to go active. She's gone down to 20 knots again. Okay, I'm a little bit surprised that even with active sonar she's not picking this up. Anyway, we'll leave that for now. What we can start to do while well, that one's still searching for the is plot one for this ca the uh, Kazbek. Um, we can have two wire torpedoes in the water at once. Um, so the Kazbek has got a solution of 80%, is 6,900 uh, yards. Let's fire about uh, about there. Uh, about there actually, fire. We want that to uh, go to the surface as well. Okay, so Torpedo 1 seems to be coming past the, pr uh, the targets now. This is Torpedo 2, Torpedo 1. She's right alongside. Okay, we still have a few minutes of control. Uh, so if we grab Torpedo 1 and we switch her to go to go right, see if we can pick up the Slurvdov. Oh, she's still turning. There you go, you must be able to pick up from there, surely. Torpedo 2, or 3 in this case, from Torpedo 2, 3, she's, uh, she's not picking up the Kazbek either. Ah! I think she's finally picked up! It's looking good. Good stuff. Right, that's a good hit on that ship. Hasn't finished her off, but she is alerted to our presence. Now, um, Torpedo Tube 3, or Torpedo 2 from Tube 3, is... We may, may be an idea to... Uh, where's she off? To send her... After the serve, serve love as well. Because that will probably serve us a little bit better. Uh, no, she. Where, where are you going? Are you going for the serve love? Yes, you are. Okay, hopefully that's got rid of this large warship. She's in a bit of trouble. She's uh, burning profusely. She's got holes 
fore and aft, well, fore and mid section, and she's still coming. She's a tough old ship, this one. Right, let's have a look. Uh, oh god, let's get these reloaded while we're just faffing around here. Um, so, torpedo tube one, let's go up. Uh, and we're going to fire. Cancel that. What's our solution on the Kazbek? Solution is 95%. That's awesome. Right, let's fire about 5,000 yards and then go active. Weapon is away. Excellent. Torpedo tube four. Um, let's see what this Servlov is doing. Oh, we've got a, we got a mystery ship here. Wait, hang on. One, two, three, and a mystery ship. Oh, no, it's a torpedo. Okay, so here's our primary target. She's going past the Servlov now. The Servlov looks in trouble, and here comes the other ship. There she is, right. Um, we've just cut the. Uh, damn, we just. Torpedo just got cut. Anyway, let's um, plot for the Kotlin then. Okay, that torpedo is. I think he's locked on. Yes. No. He's, uh, he's too low. So hopefully he'll do a pass and come back. The Servlov has sunk beneath the waves. There she is at the bottom. Uh, and we can see the other ship, the Kotlin, just over there. Contact is fading though. Okay, this torpedo is coming, coming shallow. And hopefully she'll get on the tail of this ship right now. Nice. Nice, nice. Come on. Gotcha. Good. Is that enough to see her to the bottom? Possibly. Here's the Kotlin. There's the uh, merchant ship which has just gone up. Right, so there's the Kotlin there. She's only got 40% solution on her. Uh, let's re reload to torpedo tube 3. We've lost contact with the Kotlin. Well, she was 24,000. Um, right, let's... Right, so torpedo tube 1, passive. We're going to go search pattern and up. Let's fire that at uh, 2 kilometers. You go active. Fire. She maybe we we should probably go maybe at one point four. We need to go active. Yeah, that'll do. Let's go active at one point four from there. She should uh, start to surface and start hunting down the Kazbek. Goodness me. It must be almost dead in the water, it's not picking up. Ah, oh, wires cut. Damn it. Hopefully, it's close enough, and on this pass, it should 
I hope. No, she's not. She's not acquiring at this range. Oh, I think this is it. Yep, I think. Has she? It's looking promising. I think this is it for the Kazbek. She's already probably spewing out copious amounts of oil into the water. A quick look to see if the Kotlin has popped in. No, it hasn't. Okay. Yes. Yes. So this is the primary target. And... I'm thinking that is probably the primary target sunk. It is indeed. Look at that. Look at, look at the structural damage. Alright, let's start turning to about course 180. Start heading to see if we can find this coating or Kotlin. Okay, let's go and hunt this Coatlin then. Let's get another torpedo. Oh, we've got, okay, we've just got the Mark 16s left. So we're going to have to put a Mark 16 into dual torpedo tube 1, which is fine. Um, we're going to come a little bit more south and uh, maybe come to heading 150 and see if we can pick up contact for the Coatlin once again. Or Kotlin once again, and uh, and we'll go from there. Right, so I'm going to um, continue on, and I'll bring you back when things start to heat up, as it were. So I'll see you in a bit. Hi everyone, welcome back. As you can see, the bubbling corpses of our two victims behind us on the sea floor. Um, we've stopped receiving any pings. Uh, so this Kotlin seems to have snuck away we're not picking up any contacts for it at all there's uh we're going a bit fast at the moment but there's absolutely nothing absolutely nothing um so we might actually just see if we can uh, end the combat scenario there are vessels nearby apparently okay so he is here we just can't see him uh, so what we might do start to ascend again and see if we can just come over the layer and uh, see if we can't pick this ship up he's gone very quiet for the last few moments as you can see uh, we will have to start slowing down as well as uh, I came down deep so I could go at some speed so we can get distance close down between us or his last known position um, so yeah we'll uh, we'll ascend a little bit and uh, see if we can't pick up the signal oh and there she is boom okay a little bit of speedy up time and there she is Kotlin there right 27% targets plot okay we'll just let that build up oh, we found her what's her distance don't know as yet. Wait till the solution plots itself a little bit more. We get a little bit more. Ah, oh, there we go. 9.2 kilometers. It is already on there. Speed and course will be useful. Course, she's going about 155, 16, something like that. Speed 20 knots. My goodness. Okay. Um, so maybe we can uh, chance going a little bit quicker to try and catch her up. And I might bring our course to 160, 165. I see wake up there. There she is. Okay, great. Got her in my sights now. Good, right. We are 
were we? We we can probably chance going fall ahead down to this depth, which will give us. 22 knots, we should be able to close in on her a little bit. Range is 10,000 yards. There she is. And we just lost sight of her. Damn! Must be able to acquire her very soon. There she is. Good stuff. Welcome back. Okay. Um... Range is not quite there for us. If we can get, there we go, 6.6, .6, that's not too bad. The solution is improving all the time. Gonna hold just under the layer. See if we can't uh, get a decent solution before she gets out of range again. Ah, she's going to go, isn't she? Is it worth testing one? Let's do a test fire. Um, 3,000 yeah, right, fire. Set that to uh, basically she's at a depth where she doesn't really need to climb too much. We've just lost the sonar contact. Great. So we'll wait till this torpedo is out of range before she goes. Well, she's going active in a bit anyway, so that's not a problem. Colin's back. Torpedoes are back to go active. Welcome back, everyone. We re-established with the Kotlin, uh, she is doing 38 knots, so she is in pure avoidance mode. Um, and she's just gunning away from us. There is absolutely no way we're going to catch her at this rate. Torpedo can't catch her. We can't catch her. I think our top speed is 27 knots, so um, we've got no chance of that. Uh, catching this Kotlin. So we are going to have to let her go I'm afraid. She is just too quick for us but um, that's not the end of the world. She wasn't our primary target. We've uh, we sunk our primary target which is the important thing. So um, I am going to get us out of here. Yeah, the, the torpedo can't even catch. She's just, she just be beelining it. Straight line off the map. So um, Yep, we're gonna get out of here and uh, call it a day. So thanks for so thanks for sticking with us. But um, yeah, it looks like it's gonna be in vain on this this attempt. But uh, she's got no s stomach for the fight. Um, she's running, so we're gonna let her run and we're gonna bug out. So we're gonna go deep and we're gonna go fast. And uh, yeah, we're gonna leave it there. Okay, there we go. The vessel has steamed away. Let's leave the combat area. Um, ah, so the mission was a partial success. Enemy engaged. Kotlin escaped. Too quick for us. Kazbek sunk. The Serdlov sunk. The Romeo. We never detected the Romeo. Uh, never saw that one in a month of Sunday. So I'm guessing that may have been another Kazbek cargo ship that kind of thing. Um, but there we go. Yes, a, a semi-successful mission this one. Two ships sunk, one escaped, one never seen. Hmm. We do need to improve but we are indeed getting better. Practice does indeed make perfect. The USS Tinoza has survived 
Uh, that is two survivals to my name. Uh, that can only be an improvement going forward. But we'll leave it there, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope you continue to enjoy Cold Waters. It's, uh, it's something I am enjoying. I haven't had much time to play recently due to me being away from home for quite a bit. But it's good to be back and um, we haven't uh, done disastrously badly on this one. So we'll leave it there. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.